Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to make a frame with some 3D mushrooms in there. So for the frame I am just using some icicle sticks and I'm cutting them into the lengths I want for my frame, both the height and the sides here. Uh, so you can see here I have the pieces that I want for my frame. Then I am sanding all the corners here to make sure that everything fits uh, really good together before I glue all four corners down to my frame. And as you saw earlier, I cut them all with my um, easy cutter and I cut them in a 45 degree angle. Um, you can measure that out instead if you don't have the easy cutter, but the easy cutter is definitely the easy way to do it. Anyway, let the corners uh, dry, the glue dry, before you continue to the next part. So my frames here are dried and I want to make an extra frame on top of this frame. So now I'm using a stir stick. And I'm going to do the exact same thing as before. I am measuring on my star stick and then I'm using my easy cutter to cut it into the angle that I need. And then I'm just going to measure all around the frame, making sure I have uh, the right length for these extra sticks here, sanding them before I am going to glue them onto the frame. And I am just going to use my tacky glue, so just popping a tiny dip all the way around where I know these pieces are going. And then before I place these pieces on there, I am popping a tiny bit of glue on the end pieces here so that uh, the connection around the frame is also glued together. Do this with both of your frame and let it dry. You can leave the frame just as they are now, but I decided to place a tiny toothpick around the inside of a little uh, thicker for the mushrooms really to have some space in there. So I'm just measuring these sticks and then gluing them in place around, um, around the inside frame here, just like you see me do. I'm only putting this on one of the frames so that I have both and you can see both results. Anyway, I have this pretty paper, some kind of wallpaper paper that I got from a friend that is now sadly too old to make miniature. Um, and I got a bunch of pretty, pretty paper from her. So I decided to use some of that for the backgrounds in these frames. So I'm just picking out a piece, making sure it is big enough to fill out the back space, but not uh, too big so that you can see it on the front. Then I am carefully gluing that onto a piece of cardboard and I am then cutting out the cardboard a tiny bit bigger than the paper I used. And then I am gluing that piece to the frame. Thank you. 
Make sure that you don't see the cardboard from the front of the frame and then just leave this to dry for at least a few hours before you continue with the clay. So now to the fun part. We are going to decorate these frames with mushrooms. Mushrooms of all kinds. Um, you can make them just like you want to. They don't need to look like something real. Because uh, this is just a picture and you can put in what you want. I am using my oven hardening clay, Sernit, uh, for this. But maybe air dry clay is better. Uh, and this is the biscuit uh, color that I'm using here. Um, but you can use a white with a tiny, tiny bit of brown or a tiny bit of caramel in there. Um, just make it more white than brown when you do this. I am rolling my clay into a snake so that I can make few different stems for these mushrooms, big and thin, tall and uh, not so tall. Again, it's all up to you. Then I am going to take the thicker piece of the roll out here of the uh, cane that we made here and I'm just placing that at the bottom of my frame. If you are afraid that everything will warp in the oven, then uh, put a piece of metal foil in there or um, metal paper. I forgot the right word for that. Um, tin foil, of course. Put tin foil in there and shape that around your frame. And then you can always take it out and then bake it on the tin foil and not in the frame. One of my frames did warp a tiny bit by baking, um, but the other one stayed really nice and flat. Uh, the one that stayed flat I was baking on the glass plate here and the other one I had on my uh, ceramic vat. Uh, so I think the glass plate method is best. Anyway, I am placing the stems for my mushrooms here on this white snake that we have at the bottom and I'm just placing them where I feel like they would um, look nice. Some mushroom have kind of a skirt around the bottom part of it. So I tried with a tiny piece of the clay rolling that out and then flattening it out with my uh, rolling pin here. And then um, taking it carefully off the uh, glass plate here and then wrapping that around the front of the mushroom stem. Just really careful here. Uh, and kind of molding it around the stem so that it has a skirt. It doesn't have to go all the way around because we only see one side in the picture. Make sure all these stems are really nicely uh, put together with the bottom um, snake so that everything is still holding on together when it's all done. I made a few more stems and then I went to my soft pastel colors and a paintbrush and I'm just uh, lightly brushing on a tiny bit of this uh, light brown orangey um, color here, here and there where I think they would have collected a tiny bit of dirt uh, while standing in the wild. 
Now it is time for making the hat on these mushrooms. First I am rolling this oblong shape. I'm using my dotting tool to make a kind of indent at the bottom and kind of shaping it like I want it to. Um, and whitening this little end out, out a tiny bit. And then I can just place it on the stem here um, or the stem into the little hole that I made. And then I have my first mushroom. I am actually going to use a tiny bit of bacon bond to make sure everything will stick together after being baked. I made one more of these small mushroom hats and now I am taking a bigger ball of clay and making a bigger mushroom hat and I'm kind of making a point on the top here um, and it's kind of teasing me a tiny bit um, but making a point and again using a dotting tool for the bottom part on this one and I decided to go with a big dotting tool as I wanted a big hat here and you can make these hats just like you want to um, again I'm whitening this a little to make it um, a bit more open uh, I want this to be a big mushroom and when I'm happy with this one I am just putting it onto my painting or my picture uh, again with a tiny bit of bacon bond to make sure everything will stay in place when it has been bacon. Then I am going to make another small hat here for the small one on the right side on my painting or a picture. And I'm just again using a tiny bit of pick and bond and placing that where it needs to go. And again, you just make these hats just like you want to. It can be a round ball with a hole in for the stem to go in. It can be a flat one, but most of them have some kind of top. Uh, you can look at pictures from mushrooms and just make your own, uh, be creative and make a lot of nice mushrooms here next to each other. After making all the mushrooms that I want on this little picture, I am going back with my soft pastel colors and I am going to color in my mushrooms, the hats here in colors I like. Uh, this one is going to be red, the next one in this brown and this weird purplish color. I'm using all these earth tones uh, for coloring the top of the hat here. And I'm just taking my time and enjoying this process. I really had a lot of fun with coloring in the top of the hats here. You could color the hat before you place it on the stem if that's easier for you. I just like to do it this way so I can see what color I want the next hat to have. So I'm coloring every uh, one of these hats before I bake my clay. Remember if you have air dry clay to just let it harden totally before you continue. Now after it has cooled down I am using kind of different greeneries that I have lying around. And I am taking some uh, scenic grass and mixing that together with some uh, glue here 
to make kind of a glue mixture with the grass that I can use uh, for filling out the bottom part of the picture. I also have some teeny tiny rocks from the beach that I am going to glue in here around the bottom of my mushrooms. And when I'm happy with that, I am going to use my mixture of grass and glue and place that around all this rock formation and the little stem that we have at the bottom that is holding everything together. So I'm just using my needle tool here and just stuffing it in where I have uh, room for it and so that it is hiding the bottom part but not the stems of my mushrooms. Take your time with this and just have fun with it. When you are happy with the result of this grass like thing, then just leave it to dry until it's all hardened before you can continue. I want a little more details on my mushrooms so I took a tiny bit of my white Vallejo paint and I'm using a dotting tool and making dots around one of these mushrooms here, maybe one of the other ones. And some of them I am going to make dots on and use my fingers to kind of dab it all out and make this kind of whitish uh, weird look. Again, just have fun with it and see where you get and where you go with it. Then I have these nail art butterflies that I used for my pavilion well, for quite a while ago and I actually think they are so so cute. So here I'm just figuring out which one of them I like for this picture and I think this pink one is perfect. So I am going to go with the pink one and I'm just gonna glue that in where I want it at the background here to make a little more interest at the top of it. And that's all there is for this little craft here. I made both of the frames so you can see two different version here and they turned out pretty both of them. So I hope you will have a lot of fun with this one. I actually did and I might make even more of these pictures. Anyway, that's all for today. Happy crafting.